Tonight you brought us. Thanks. Why? I wanted to be with family. I wanted to be with family, says Dexter Morgan. That's a, a, a new and odd idea for him, sort of, kind of. Definitely a part of the journey that he went on in this episode. In episode 805, This Little Piggy, uh, written by me, Scott Reynolds. Um, and instead of just me sitting here talking to myself, which would be like almost every day, um, Rob G, Galuzzo, two L's. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying <laughs> the correct spelling. In case people are looking for you on Fache book. Oh yeah, because <laughs> you don't want to go. To, you don't want to befriend that guy with one L. No, no. forget that guy. That guy. He's. Whoa. I think he's a cannibal or something. Something like that. So I heard. So <laughs> that's not me. But uh, but yeah, uh, eight oh five. Really good episode. Well done, Scott. Hey hey Scott hey. Scott Reynolds. <laughs> uh, and it's funny because it seems like the the theme. Uh, in particular for this one is family all across the board with uh, Deb Dex and Vogel, Masuka and Harrison, Harrison yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Masuka and his daughter as well. We'll get to that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it opens up with what I consider almost like a, a family therapy session, Yes, which is Dexter really angry and emotional about what happened at the end of last episode. And yeah, so we're trying to do, we're trying to make like a, uh, make it very, uh, see a Dexter that you've never seen before. Dexter just pissed off mm -hmm. and angry like in a very human way not in a open your eyes and look at what you've done you right know? right of i'm course. gonna cut off your eyelids it's not dark passenger scary it's mm. man dexter's mad and, yeah. it's, and it's understandable yeah totally i mean you know was... if your sister tries to murder you <laughs> you have every right in the world to be pissed off yeah totally i mean it happens all the time but in this case if you're <laughs> you know a psychopath or a serial killer uh, it's not as fun. But um, was that it... means something to Dexter. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> this isn't just a normal, everyday thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, it's a fun scene. Was it fun to write uh, this kind of dynamic? Because it's, it's also, uh, this episode is the first step for Deb. I don't want to say fully accepting, but it's definitely a big step forward in where we've seen her so far. Yeah, she is um, definitely, she's definitely becoming a... Uh, uh, coming out of her PTSD, mm -hmm. you know, as they say, you need to sort of hit rock bottom. Right. Um, she hit rock bottom. Yeah. By, uh, the last episode when she, when Jesus didn't take the wheel, <laughs> she took the wheel and, and, and threw him, threw him into the, uh, into a lake and nearly killed him. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, was it, was the intent to show, uh, cause the thing is the line between, uh, you know, the, the textbook definition of a psychopath is that yeah. they can't feel anything. And yet, I, I, as a viewer, I feel like Dexter is very emotional and very open in the open in the opening of this scene. Yeah. So, can you talk a little bit about what you guys were trying to get across in terms of, of showing Dexter in a way that we haven't seen before? Um, what we were going for was uh, Dexter felt hurt, mm -hmm. and and that was manifesting itself in anger. But Dexter doesn't feel hurt. Dexter doesn't care what you think, or Dexter, or does, he doesn't care what you do. He doesn't care about your life. He doesn't care if you call him a or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but his sister is his sort of weak spot, and she um, she can hurt him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's sort of uh, that, that's what that's what we're going for. That Dexter, Dexter as a hurt human being, which mm -hmm. we, which I think we've never seen ever on this show. I mean, may, maybe a slight bit with Lumen after she uh, after she ditched him yeah. and went off for for uh, clearer waters. I'm still sad about. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, you know, he threw a plate. He was so hurt. <laughs> That's true. That was more anger than anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so let's talk a little bit about the Deb and Dex dynamic yeah. because the strength of the show has always been his relationship, and and, and 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 obviously that grew by leaps and bounds for season seven. You right. know, all throughout her trying to change him and then accept what he is, and then uh, again, big step forward for this episode because it seemed like she didn't want him in, in her life anymore. And now Vogel kind of steps in to, I don't know, walk her back towards who she used to be. Yeah. 
So um, that was a, yeah, that was something we sort of flipped on its ear. It's usually you know last season and certainly you know the first episode of this season. Um, Dexter spent so much time trying to get in touch with Deb, calling her. She's uh-huh. ignoring her. Her, mail, her mailbox is full. You know all, all that sort of stuff. And and uh, this episode, it's Deborah who's reaching out to him, saying we need to talk about this. I'm you know uh-huh. she wants to apologize or whatever you know however she wants to ha- sort of handle what she's done because she recognizes. All right, what I did was bad. However, <laughs> I did just find out that my father committed suicide because of you. Yeah. Because of who you are. And I want to talk about that, you know. Right. But also, than, the know. interesting thing is that it 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 clearly identifies... I mean, she's been regretting the moment with LaGuardia this whole time. Yes. But it clearly defines that given another chance, she will... Dexter. Dexter. That's right. By the end of the... Yeah, by the end of the... Uh, or I love the of last episode, 804... Mm-hmm. She comes to that conclusion. Basically, she will always choose Dexter. Yeah. So she has no choice. Uh, so so she can't things. feel guilty necessarily. I mean, she can feel guilty. She can feel bad, but she can't. It's sort of like in her DNA, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. To choose family, and meanwhile, Dexter. This episode is just like over family, <laughs> which you know it's fun to see Dexter that way. Yeah. You know, sort of like a regular. He's definitely a lot like us. In yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sometimes I mean, I you know you love your family to death, but sometimes you're just like, uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and speaking of uh, family, we actually get the introduction of Hamilton and uh, the, the son, Zach. Right. Who, it seems like there's definitely something up with that son, especially that one interesting conversation they had, uh, him and Dexter, in front of uh, Dexter's car. Yeah, Sam so, Underwood. Is, yeah. Uh, is, uh, he's a Brit, so when mm-hmm. you're watching him, it's astounding how, how good he is. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely, uh, you know, as, as Dexter and uh, Batista, and then it was Quinn, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. As they're they're investigating the homicide of the of the maid in that household, uh-huh. um, Rivera, I think her name, last name was. Um, they're sitting there, you know, trying to trying to make trying to pin this on the on the father who clearly had sex, you know, and then he, he confesses, like, yeah, okay, I did have sex, but yeah. this is not that's not murder, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know. And then in, in walks this son who, I don't know, he's got sort of the same sort of stare mm-hmm. that I think certain other people on the show might have. Right. Yeah, or not. Who knows? I mean, I know. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell you. So you're not saying, we, should we be paying attention to this young lad? Or uh, yeah, I think it's almost impossible not to, don't you think? Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> when he comes out and just sort of stares at Dexter, <laughs> leans against his car. Yeah, he's a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's a little interesting. And, and yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, there's your hint, folks. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I love that line when he, uh, when he says, you know, my dad's... He's not a he's not a murderer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what about uh, let's talk a little bit about Quinn because yeah. he's he's had a lot of really interesting stuff going on this season as well. Uh, his relationship with Jamie and then uh, obviously you've been his, very for yeah, the record, for, Rob. G's very into that relationship with Jamie, aren't you? <laughs> Who wouldn't be? Come <laughs> on. Uh, yeah. I understand you're like thinking about having a child just so that you could ha- get get her as a nanny. If that's if that's what nannies look like these days, <laughs> I would be open to children. Uh, otherwise, not. <laughs> uh, but uh, all right, Twitterverse, you heard it first. Ah, <laughs> uh, come on, let's not let's not get too crazy here. <laughs> But uh, so, you know, to me, Quinn had um, a really big moment uh, this episode getting. Well, I mean, we've been, uh, you know, Batista has been pushing him to. Right. To become go a sergeant. A sergeant. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Man uh, up. Man yeah. up. Step up and, and take responsibility and live. You know, from from uh, Batista's point of view, he's like, be worthy of my sister. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you better be good enough for her. My sister <laughs> is in uh, graduate school. Yeah. She is studying to be a clini- a child psychologist. She's right. destined for greatness. <laughs> I don't want her stuck with some homicide detective that is just going to spin his wheels here the rest of his life. Right, yeah. right. And there is that one moment where Batista is a little nervous that he's not going to pass his test. <laughs> he's like, wait a minute, what should I do? Was uh, that, this, that was this episode, right? Yeah, I with think the, so. Uh, with the, uh, uh, yeah, it was. With, when, when, they're, when uh, Batista's <laughs> quizzing him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he yeah. goes, is it A, this, B, this, C, this, he D, gets this. Totally and he gets it totally wrong. He says B <laughs> and the answer for C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but you know, he gets, uh, he, he gets to, um, he gets to be uh, kind of, uh, what are those, those called when they, when they're in charge of those meetings? Right. The, the uh, morning briefing. Yeah. Don't edit that. That's great. <laughs> it's a, you're not a cop. How would you know, know these things? Yeah. Uh, but he gets to kind of, uh, to be, uh, upfront for the morning briefing and he handles it well. He does. It, it, interestingly in the, in the room, we were thinking he should stumble through it, mm-hmm. you know, that it should be one of those sort of awkward uh, Quinn mumbly moments. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But then I don't know. I, I forget somebody else was like, no, let's make it. Let's make him uh, more than adequate at this. Let let him be like a professional, he, and not, and not just because um, Matthews has walked in the room yeah. and is staring, you know, staring at him. But it should make it uncomfortable for Miller. Right. He's yeah. good at what he does. He's yeah. good at what he does. Yeah, yeah. So that was sort of fun to see. It was fun for it was fun for Desmond. I know he 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 came and uh, I think he like thanked us like. Mm-hmm. Thanks for making me seem solid there, as opposed to the, the, the bumbler. Yeah, well, I mean, Matthews has been kind of a jerk. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, Matthews so, doesn't hold him in high regard yeah. either. So I was so glad that he didn't like buckle under the pressure of Matthews being there. It was, yeah. it was good for him. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did it well. He did it well on the day too. <laughs> the real Desmond. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what about the Yates character? Because this is, uh, you know, he he ends up. He's kind of been in the. Uh, not totally prominent, but he's been there for the last yes. couple of episodes, and now he's abducted. The brain surgeon, right? The brain, yeah. The, yeah. So he's abducted Dr. Vogel, yes. who he has a lot of hostility for. Yes. Um, and just, you know, you guys always come up with some really creepy, crazy versions of serial killers. And just the thing with him smashing the toes and kind of yeah. describing what he does is really, really bizarre. It, yeah, it all came from uh, his abusive mother, which I think you're fond of abusive mother stories, aren't you, well, Mr. Psycho? Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> not fond of not abusive in real mothers, life, no. but in yeah, a story. Yeah. No, and, no, and that, and so his only safe place was Yates' safe place was to was to uh, hide under this under his bed, mm-hmm. and he'd see his mother in her shoes, her high heeled shoes, pacing back and forth, screaming, raging, looking for him at all hours Mm -hmm. and so that transferred you know on top of the fact that he was a he is a psychopath Mm -hmm. you know and that's something that the show sort of deals with a lot the the thought of just because you're a psychopath it doesn't mean that you're going to go off and kill people Mm -hmm. you know uh yeah you guys have mentioned several times this season things like politicians yeah there's people people, yeah yeah there's people in power that that are psychopaths people that we know and love you know presidents yeah that uh, may or may not have been psychopaths, but uh, and it's been a great strength to them. But then sometimes there's a trigger in people's lives that cause them, like with Dexter, mm-hmm. being you know watching his mother chopped up by a chainsaw, which might mess up a normal person, but yes. how much more so a psychopath? Yeah. And for Yates, who was a psychopath, this was how he learned to deal with this weird, uncomfortable anger, you know, mm-hmm. as, as a way to feel something by uh, capturing women and breaking their toes one at a time. Right. Until he sort of so he got them all and. Uh, killed, uh, killed, killed him, and buried him in his backyard under a rose bush. Man, I mean, I don't like feet, but this is a little excessive. I think uh, just a bit much. <laughs> and I mean, I know you Google alert serial killers, yes, which is also a little weird. But it's for the show. I, it's all I research. Understand. <laughs> but uh, was did you pull anything uh, from facts when it came to kind of crafting Yates, or no, was that something? That you guys... was just. Uh, it was one of those things that happened in the room. Somebody was some, you know, somebody was talking about feet, ah. and then. It went forward from there, and the next thing we know, we're <laughs> we're cracking toes. <laughs> so you're sticking dun, twisted dun, minds. Dun, dun, yeah, yeah. Um, which is, that was a very fun uh, crime scene too. That episode. Yeah. That uh, that that backyard. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun with those bodies and and trying to make sure that that uh, rose bushes. This is where Josh Meltzer stepped up. Yeah. You know, making sure rose bushes were uh, grown around some of the corpses back there. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of creepy. Cool. That moment where they're like, "There's, there's one, a body underneath each rose yeah. bush, and you see a bunch of them there." Yeah, that was cool. That was yeah. scary. Yates, man, with that scar on the back of his head. So weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he might have a problem with brains too. <laughs> yeah, um, we'll talk about Yates, the conclusion of this episode in a second. But let's okay. talk a little bit about Masuka and Nikki. Yes, his daughter. Oh man, I, yeah. lo- I love, I, I love seeing them. It's, oh, it's fun yeah. to see. We've we've grown accustomed to. I mean, part of the reason why we did this mm-hmm. this season is, you know, Masuka uh, has been alone a lot. You know, I mean, sure he he has his internet, yes, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and probably several thousand videos, yeah, uh, and and pro- you know, and hooks up here and there occasionally. With he talks yeah, about yeah. it, but but never really. I don't know. He always feels like he's he's alone. Like at the end of the day, he goes home and go, goes to a club. Maybe he's able to pick somebody up who's drunk enough, and then, uh, or, or not drunk, <laughs> you know. And then, and then she leaves in the morning, and that's his life, you know. Mm-hmm. So we were we were trying to trying to give him something more, right? You know, and and that more is uh, Nikki, his I mean, uh, and it worked. His sperm donor daughter. Wow, <laughs> and it worked because you know, one episode later, like uh, the way he talks about, I mean, he finds out about her in four, and yes. then in five, he, he seems pretty stoked that he has a daughter. He is. He's, There's this great conversation between him and Deb where he's being serious because 
Quinn puts the uh, seed in his head. Yeah, that's the that, moment. Yeah, at the briefing. Maybe, you know, maybe yeah. she wants more than just connection, like maybe money. And then yeah. they're ordering all that food, you know, the coffee or whatever. And then she yeah. starts adding all this food onto it. But and just maybe innocently, maybe not. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. But um, let's talk about that scene with him and Deb, because uh, I remember when we were watching it, I joked, this is the most, like, serious that masuka's ever been yeah cs is so good yeah. yeah and you were like oh no he was serious in season three but i didn't mean serious what i meant was he's genuinely being dramatic he's yeah. having a serious conversation yeah. with deborah like a grown-up conversation yeah he's being a grown-up <laughs> <laughs> the evolution of masuka he wasn't trying to cop a feel he wasn't uh laughing at it because because it, it comes from a, a, a sense of insecurity yeah. you know that mm-hmm. he's he's sitting here with he's sitting here with somebody that um he's thinking about giving his heart to basically of of stepping into this role of, uh, of a father. Mm-hmm. And yet most of his life, he's been hurt by people that yeah. I, I, you know, and when we talk about him in the room, we feel like he's been hurt by a lot. I, you know, we've actually seen that on screen with, uh, uh, Brea. Oh, Brea Grant. Brea uh, Grant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brea, what was her name? Uh, um, Ryan Chambers. Yeah. Yeah. From yeah. Season six. Yeah. Like he was all in, he mm-hmm. was ready to give her his heart and loins <laughs> yes. repeatedly. And, uh, she hurt him, yeah. And so, we we sort of figured that's what that's what he g- got most of his life was right. a sort of, I'll give you what I have, and then then he gets hurt yeah. over it. And so, so by hiring Deb, it wasn't necessarily so that he can uh, reject her. It's mm-hmm. that you know that he can just know ahead of time and adjust his life accordingly. Yeah, you know. But he is a sort of expecting at this point. He's sort of expecting the worst. Yeah, yeah. And, Dora- and it's fun that Deb, ste- you know, Deb. Deb's at a point in her life where it's like, I don't know, family may not be, you know, yeah. may not exactly what you want. Right, right, right. That's pretty funny. And, and Dora's great. She's, is she great? Yeah. She, she's uh, uh, competing with my affection for, uh, for Amy Garcia, for, oh, uh, for okay. Jamie Al, <laughs> who I love. She's our guest later, so it's going to be fine. Yeah, yeah, she's great. Uh, she's great. Remember her? Uh, you, know, you, yeah, you still haven't watched Friday Night Lights, man. I know. I gotta, That's, I in case you don't know where that. she's from. She's on Friday Night Lights, uh, like the final three seasons, I think. And yeah. she is remarkable. Yeah. Well, she's so great. far, she's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. How about the double date? Dexter on a double date with, uh, you know, it's, it's Jamie and, yeah. uh, and Quinn. And Cassie. And Cassie, the, the neighbor. Yeah. And uh, she kind of, she told Dexter about it, but he seems kind of almost ambushed. Well, that was that <laughs> moment at the, at the very beginning when he's still thinking, ugh, family. Because he's got yeah, yeah. Harrison in front of him saying, I want to watch TV, five more minutes. Can I do this? Can I do that? Which yeah. is, you know, parents, you have to deal with that all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Making deals when you're trying to get something else and you're trying to get out the door. And so within that, Jamie threw this thing out like, hey, I'm thinking of having Cassie over. To mm-hmm. which she says, He's like, yeah, yeah, fine, whatever, okay. Yeah, he agrees to it, not <laughs> and then knowing. Yeah, just goes right over his head, and he. Meanwhile, he's just another bob, another bob bother. Right, right. And but, then, yeah, and well, then at the moment when he does least wants anybody to uh, <laughs> to, to confront him. Yeah. The moment when he's when he has a, uh, you know, he's got these these houses that he's mm-hmm. tracked down using Yates's uh, um, list of homes that he's worked on. Yeah. Uh, he comes home thinking, all right, I'll change my clothes. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, uh, you know, call up Deb. Hopefully she'll be done with her half of, of, the, of the list, and we'll have a series of homes we can go look at. Yeah. And then uh, it, there's Cassie. And, and I love Quinn, like, want a beer? <laughs> <laughs> just, which would just be a stunner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Walk in on Quinn. Uh, and I mean, you know, the two best moments in that scene. Uh, well, first we get to like Jamie, he tries to leave and Jamie yeah. puts her foot down. This yes. is the first time we've ever seen Jamie like that. Yeah, yeah. You, you see know? the strong, the strong sister of you see a Batista. little Batista in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so. I, I love that moment too when she just like, she, she, uh, there's a little uh, Goodfellas homage in that scene uh-huh. when she, she's walking, she's walking down the hall to go, <laughs> st- you know, to go uh, talk to Dexter. And she says, Quinn, stir, you know, stir the pot, oh, stir yeah, the yeah. sauce. Yeah. I'm stirring, I'm stirring. Yeah. <laughs> I bet Desmond loved that. Yeah, yeah. I thought we'd give him that one because yeah. uh, he got to, he got to do that. And then, and then she, so that you got, <laughs> you got Dexter in his room thinking, I've handled everything. Yeah. No more problems. And then uh, she just walks into his room and that look on uh, that Michael C. Hall gave, mm-hmm. she look, everyone should look at that moment again. Yeah. Because there's like look on his face <laughs> like, what the are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in my room. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty awesome, and it, it, and yeah. we've never seen it that way. And and just you know, I feel like she blackmails him a little, and then he uses oh. it. Like she's like, "I'll watch Harrison later." Yeah, which is so when he bails out of there, it's yeah, like, yeah. "Oh, thanks for agreeing to watch Harrison." Yeah. Um, but then the other cool thing is is 
you know, we don't really know much about Cassie, but, um, and, and I know probably Dexter hasn't even given it a second thought, right. but on the way out, she covers for him. She's yeah. like, you know what? It's cool. You go, we'll make it up. And all of a sudden he's like, huh? Yeah. Interesting. Somebody, somebody that could be a, uh, unwitting co-conspirator. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's fun. I, I, uh, she's great too. Yeah. She, yeah, but I, I I like that moment when he's at, when he's at the fridge and he kind of gives her a little uh, hey, come here for a second, baby. <laughs> you see the, the suave Dexter come yeah, in yeah. and she comes on over and and yeah. she totally gets it. Yeah, and she's cool. Yeah, that's she all, is. That's what Dexter we'll, wants. We'll see what in his uh, life. we'll see what happens from there. A cool female neighbor. Yeah, we could all be so lucky. <laughs> uh, and so then obviously there's there's the uh, the confrontation with Yates to get Vogel back and and it's interesting right. because. It seems like Deb and Dex, we've never really seen them, um, you know, going into, you know, Dexter usually tracks somebody down on his own. Yes. But this is when their bond actually, in my opinion, becomes stronger. It's like, yeah. oh, Deb is with him 100% to get Vogel back. And that's and whatever, something new. And whatever that means. Yeah, yeah exactly. With Yates. So it's kind of neat seeing Deb and Dex go into a house together yeah. to do whatever has to be done. So can you talk a little bit about that, uh, that, that sequence and just, you know, uh, what you guys are trying to illustrate or, or prove with, with the Deb and Dex by the end of that episode? Yeah, it was, one, it was one of those things where they both have the same care and love and concern for their spiritual mother, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, for, uh, for Dr. Vogel. And, uh, and we try to make this moment, too, in the car when, you know, you don't see the usual bluster that Dexter can give, not bluster, it's not the right word, but his, his um, calm assuredness mm-hmm. that he sort of has. Like, there's a moment where he sort of confesses, I hope she doesn't get killed. Yeah. You know? And Deb sees that. Deb sees this this concern, which is exactly what she sort of needs, you know, to see him as a, there's a real heart beating underneath that mm-hmm. uh, cold facade that is Dexter Morgan with his four different faces, you know? Um and so he revealed a little bit something inadvertently sort of to her, and uh, she accepted that thing. So, so when they go in that house, uh, we were going for that they are like – like it's like a, a, a Marvel team-up. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's working out pretty well because she's got her gun out, and she comes in, and she is – she's calm and cool, and, and they, you know, they, they, they breach the door. They look around the room. And there's nothing going on in there, and they go down – Dexter sees the blood, which, mm. you know, of course, he's drawn to. The two of them are walking down. Dexter has her go ahead because she's got the gun mm-hmm. just in case. So he's willing to let her, you know, shoot the guy mm-hmm. if, if he is around. And they, they clear each room. You know, Dexter then takes a quick moment outside the bathroom door to make sure that uh, Deb's okay. And she's like, yeah, she's fine. And then they hear the thump upstairs. Mm-hmm. You know? So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was fun to see them working together and sort of going on a dare I say, kill together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, She's there to rescue, and Dexter's there to rescue and, and eliminate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they go upstairs, and uh, they find Dr. Vogel hiding in the closet. Mm-hmm. Or not hiding, uh, bound up and gagged in the closet. And uh, and then that story that they heard over the phone about uh, Yates sort of comes back, and Dexter you know, notices a little bit of blood under the thing. Yeah. And then Dexter just acts without thought. Mm-hmm. As as he is wont to do, like we see, full on predator serial killer. This is what I do. I hunt bad people and kill them. Dexter Morgan, like yeah. of old, just grab the uh, the, uh, the the wrought iron um, curtain rod and mm-hmm. slam through the bed and, and uh, kill the guy. But I cringed as soon as I saw. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, just no. sitting under there, like <laughs> ready with that knife, ready to just slash at her bare ankles. Yeah, because this season. I don't know if you notice this season. Normally, she wears her man boots. Mm-hmm. This season, she's always wearing like chucks or you know, cute little tennis shoes. Yeah, and uh, uh, tennis socks, I guess, or whatever they're called. Mm-hmm. Is it tennis socks? I don't know. I'm asking you these questions. Anklets, socks. I don't know. So bare ankles all the time, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Um, yeah. So 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 there's that moment that Dexter gets to be a serial killer, and then and then you know he holds it. He holds that rod still. It's mm-hmm. quivering a little bit as the guy's struggling, and then he's you know he's dead. Yeah. And then. Yeah. His first concern is Deb. Yeah, you know, are you okay? Because mm-hmm. re- in that moment, he realizes, "Oh God, I just speared, I just speared somebody else, right? Just like I did at the end of season six. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> crazy. Did I destroy her again? She's yeah. so well, so well. And and Deborah's just like, let's clean this up and get the hell out of here. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. It's an awesome yeah. moment. 
which then which then brings us full circle. Yeah, you know that at the top of the episode, Dexter is sick and tired of family. Mm-hmm. They're nothing. They're nothing but trouble and angst and things that Dexter doesn't like because he doesn't like feeling uncomfortable. He doesn't like feeling anger and hurt. He's un- he's never experienced that before. You know. Yeah. Um, and now at the end, he uh, he does something he's never done before. Yeah, he brings him on the boat, a yeah. place where he's always alone. Yeah, he's never really brought anybody there to dispose of. Uh, a victim, so yeah, I, I, interesting. It's fun too, like just the little things that Michael does on that boat. When uh, when Doctor Vogel, you know, he he tosses, just chucks Yates' body over the side. Didn't chop <laughs> him up. He was, he was kind to his family at that point. Yeah. Not, I'm not going to chop this up in front of you. That's gross. Yeah, my father didn't like that. You might not either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, when Doctor Vogel says, you know, it's nice out here, and then that's just sort of simple line that Dexter says, I like it. Yeah, I love I, I love those moments like his I like it's and his O's. If you watch him, those are the moments. Those are the moments moments when the real Dexter sort of comes through. He doesn't know what to say. He's just, yeah. just very simple and direct. You know, mm. I like it. Yeah, it's where I go when I'm. I like being out. here. It's peaceful when I'm alone. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's been fun seeing this quote unquote family dynamic through the whole season, but in particular in this fifth episode. Yeah, yeah. That awesome. was actually a moment that um that uh um. Uh, uh, Sarah Collin, uh, one of our producers here, mm-hmm. su- sort of suggested, what if, what if we ended this sort of like with an unholy family out on this boat? <laughs> yeah. The three of them together, and we were like, oh, my gosh, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah that's great. Um, and, again, it's, it's got it's me excited fun. for this Deb Dex uh, now that they're sort of back together. Yeah. I'm curious where the rest of the season goes from this. Yeah, Morgan Twins activate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, it definitely... We were, we were trying to get to a point to where everything's sort of healed up, mm-hmm. you know, in as much as you, you can be when you've experienced the kind of life that Deborah has yeah. and, and Dexter, for that matter. Um, but the brain surgeons put behind them. And now what's the future hold for for Dexter Morgan and his spiritual mother and his sister? It's yeah. uh, very exciting. It is. Yeah. Hopefully people dug it. I did. I yeah, me that. too. I liked you did. You did it's well, like, Scott Reynolds. Oh, Good geez. job with that. It's, right you know. It's You're a, a good writer. It's a beautiful group effort here <laughs> over at Dexter. You know, all, all the writers and the actors and everybody all sort of come together to make something magical. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. I can't, I, it's fun. Yeah. And, it's, and we're almost halfway through season eight. I know. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. I'm thrilled just to be here for the podcast, so thank you for having me. Are you kidding me? That's Thanks awesome. for uh, well done, Rob G. Yeah. Yeah. You, now, should, you should podcast on some other things I somewhere. I do occasionally. Well, like what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why aren't you allowed to say? You do a killer POV, right? I do do killer POV. And yeah. Scott Reynolds is on our show. It's yeah, yeah. Pretty awesome. It's a great show. Geek and, it's, and what's that about? It's about uh, horror, horror movies, horror, basically. All horror movies. Yeah. So if you follow me and Scott on Twitter, you know that we like to talk about horror movies. We do. Quite a bit. Yeah. So that's good. I'm very excited for our guest today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, coming up uh, this episode, we, got, we have a great interview with someone that uh, everybody's favorite nanny. Mm hmm. <laughs> I swear that was not a devious. Mm-hmm. I was really no. I know it, you're. It was both. Okay, but that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It, she she shares a lot of interesting things. How mm-hmm. uh, the tweets that she gets about childcare. Yes. Uh, and the need for it. <laughs> that's yep. pretty amazing. So uh, yeah, uh, uh, Amy Garcia, Amy Jamie. Yep. We, call, we call her Amy Jamie on the set. Mm-hmm. So uh, sit back, relax, check it out. <laughs> Welcome to the, uh, the Dexter wrap up for episode eight oh five, this little piggy, and it has nothing to do with our guest, <laughs> Amy Garcia, Amy Jamie. Mm-hmm. Thanks for coming in, Amy. Also, and you, you play Jamie, uh, the perfect uh, child care giver for a serial killer, like the best ever made. Best nanny any serial killer could have. Right? <laughs> It's amazing. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, you want to stay till two in the morning? Sure. Sure, okay. Like, what's the OT like? It's got to be it's Oh, it's be great. Incredible. She's, she's, yeah, she's rolling in dough. She's it's, driving a caddy. Yeah, she's getting her own car. <laughs> Things are looking up and up. Um, let's talk about you. Yeah, before we dive into all this Dexter stuff, because sure. we both know we like Dexter a lot. Dexter's mm-hmm. a good show. It's, it's uh, 8.05, this little piggy. Um, <laughs> You're from Chicago. I am. You're I'm from, from Chicago. Chicago. I like Chicago. I like Chicago too. Yeah. So, uh, tell me about that. How did you uh, get into this whole acting thing? I understand you were you 
this wasn't your tell me no go yeah yeah no I um go ahead you could say let's see I started as a professional dancer in you're Chicago. a dancer I was I did my first professional performance at seven as a dancer oh my goodness so you're so there's like little videos floating around of you unfortunately yes yes and uh <laughs> And then when I was nine, my mom had a friend who was an agent who said, oh, you have to get her into commercials. And my mom's like, oh, but she's really not that cute. What, what a personality. <laughs> and then um, they needed a dancer for a commercial. My mom's like, oh, that, sh that she can do. So I got the job. It was for First National Bank. Okay. But um, I ended up doing McDonald's commercials with, you know, Michael Jordan and Sammy oh, Sosa and Charles Barkley. And yeah, I just kind of got the bug, you know, early on and did a bunch of theater um, during high school. And Where'd you uh, go to high school? Fenwick. It okay. was a predominantly boys' high school. There was 800 Did boys you trick and 100 people girls. or something? Oh, okay. So there were No, girls. it was all upperclassmen boys. Ah. So, you know, all my best friends were, were guys. So I'm very comfortable with. With you boys. are. You're sort of a. If people don't know. She's sort of a. She's sort of a dude. <laughs> yeah. You play I, poker. Yeah. I golf. Yeah. Yeah. I like, do feel like a guy <laughs> trapped in a girl's body, for sure. Even my girlfriends are like, okay, we need a guy's perspective, Amy. <laughs> so if he didn't text me yesterday, I'm like, he's just not that into he's you. Not into you. <laughs> So it's, but yeah, no, I, I loved it, and I went to Northwestern, and I majored in um, heard of that place economics, journalism, and French. So you didn't go for acting. I didn't. I actually, was it one of these things where you had to think? I love acting, but I gotta, mm -hmm. I gotta be pragmatic. Mm -hmm. I gotta exactly. make a living. Exactly. Because actors, yeah, it's tough you, to make a living. You never know. I actually, you know, starting from the age of nine or I guess seven, I just did acting to kind of pay for college. Right. So once I was in college, I studied other stuff along with acting as well on the side. And then once I graduated, I actually went to New York to work as a mutual fund analyst for an investment survey company. Oh, my goodness. And then I got a job over from Morgan Stanley, and I had to make a decision. I thought, you know what? I wish I didn't love acting, but I do. And even though I just did it to pay for college up until now, <laughs> I just got to face the the music and just realize that I love it. And wow. I moved to L.A. That's uh, uh, Jen Yale, one of the writers on Dexter. Oh, she she did that whole same same sort of trip where she with mutual funds and work. <laughs> she might even work for Morgan Stanley. I think. Yeah, she was she was full on into that thing and then yeah. made that decision. Uh, is this really what I love? Yeah, she's got to go for that dream. Yeah, it's almost like I had I had dated acting for so long. I needed to kind of <laughs> date another career that was polar opposite. And completely, I love it. So you're good with money then. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, it taught me how to invest, and yeah. all my friends make fun of me. How but do you do that? I don't know. Hey, Investing, you know, you just gotta. Know. Got to, you know, money you save is a penny earned, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I spend it. <laughs> um, then you come to L.A. Mm -hmm. And was it like, a me is it one of those uh, overnight stories? And uh... mm, Kind of, you know, uh. seven days. I know, I, I've been really lucky. Seven days so easy for after you. I landed. <laughs> I know. I. It, it is true. It, it was like a week after I got to L.A., I was doing a movie with Jennifer Aniston, and I was... Heard of her? And she was like, hi, I'm Jennifer. Friend? No, oh, okay. I just, you know, went in and, and auditioned and got right. it, and I've just been really lucky, and I got my first, you know, series regular role, and kind of one thing led to what another. Was that? Um, it was called Greetings from Tucson on okay. the WB. Okay. And, uh, and how you know, old were you? Like twenty two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was. I was. Yeah. I was actually. Yeah. I was twenty two. Yeah. And I then. Uh, I'm not stalking you or anything. Yeah. No. That no. That was creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. No. Hey, it's all good. But um. But yeah, it's just been really good. And yeah. you know, I started actually doing comedy. I did the George Lopez show, and then ended up doing Peter Berg's show Trauma, where I was in a right. uniform the whole time. Flying fake helicopters, and uh, and then I'm you know and came, came to out Dexter. of Dexter yep. as as uh, as Jamie mm -hmm. the nanny. Yeah. How, how how do you like all that? I mean, it's got to be it's got to be sort of you, you know you're the you're the person who takes care care of the kid. Mm hmm. How, acting with children. Let's talk yeah, about that. Yeah. I mean, you know, when I it's like anything. Like when you join a show, to me, it's kind of like a band. Like you have to know what your place is. Right. in this kind of already established show. Right. So um, I thought, you know, what can Jamie bring to the table? And um, I realized it's innocence. She's right. the only woman on the show who isn't damaged. Right. And, uh, and she takes care of Dexter's most prized possession, which is his kid. Right. And, you know, he even says, this is the only thing in my life that seems right. This is the thing that I love the most. And... You know, when he was thinking and having those suicidal thoughts in the middle of the ocean, right. I think it was at the end of six, the only thing that kind of was an anchor for him is 
Harrison. So I think he really trusts her. Yeah. And, um, you know, she's becoming more and more like family. She's the closest thing that Dexter has to a wife. Yeah. She runs his personal life. It's weird, life. right? It, it, yeah, it, it, I mean, he <laughs> doesn't have a wife. You know, she's definitely the closest thing Harrison has to a mom. Yeah. And she almost has become this season like his wing girl. You know, you yeah. never see Dexter interact platonically with a girl in a very normal way. And what I love about Jamie's character is that she interacts with him the way that people interacted with him in the pilot. And right. she thinks of him as the way that they thought of him in the first episode, which is a lab geek yeah. who brings donuts, who's socially awkward, yeah. and doesn't have luck with the ladies, when in reality, he's a total pimp. He's a womanizer. <laughs> you know, he gets laid by soccer moms. Right. And, he has, and she has and, no and, idea. Yeah. yeah, and he's like an overall, you know, badass. And, but to, a, and a serial killer, <laughs> yeah, on the side. <laughs> and a serial, but to her, she's, you know, he's just a dad that reads oh. everybody poops. Yeah, so yeah. it's really fun. I think I love that tension where his secret isn't out with her. Yeah. So with her, we get that nostalgia of, you know, he's putting his, you know, chest case away and, and she walks in or, or you know, she reams him and puts him in his place where he's like, I have to go make a kill. And she's yeah. like, oh, no, you didn't. Right. You know, you'd be responsible. And she's almost like a mother figure to him in that in that moment. Yeah, that was sort of, at 805, was sort of the first, uh, it's like the first moment that we felt like Jamie got to stand, stand up, up to, to Dexter. Because yeah. most of the time it's like, uh all right, I'll watch the kid. Or yeah. you got to be out. Uh, okay, I'll I'll stick around till four in the morning. Yeah, I won't even ask what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, and she has you know the ul like ultimate respect for him, and she loves him. And right. since the first episode, she said he's such a great boss, and she he lets me just make my own schedule. And so I feel like she has nothing but respect for him, and she sees Dexter with love goggles. Right. And it's this untarnished view of just a great, great dad. Yeah. And um. And yeah, in that in that episode, it's the first time that she's like, "Look, usually I don't care. You can do it to me, but it's very rude when you do it to other people, you yeah. know." And she yeah. really schools him and lays into him like a mother lays into a kid. Yeah. And in a way, when I was doing that scene, I felt like I was scolding a child. <laughs> and in a well, way, well, he gave you that look, sorta, too. Though, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like so tail between the legs. Yeah. yeah, he's like, Rrr. <laughs> but um, but you know, I think he's so used to being. A control freak in a way and and yeah. even like I love what you guys do as writers where a scene that can seem unrelated really has like a overarching effect like when she's throwing away Harrison's toys last season and she's getting rid of toys right. and at the end of the episode he's like I have to get rid of my toys which are his blood slides yeah. you know so it's 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 a big move especially anyone that's any much of a pat rack and it's hard to let go of things that have very nostalgic value so it's funny that even someone who you know is in his life not married to him or not like has a big Affects I think him. effect yeah. on him and and um I really think she's one of the few people that he trusts wholeheartedly, you know? So it's absolutely it's a big yeah. you know thing for her. But but yeah, I think that that was a scene where she really feels like family. You know, she has her family dinner with him, Christmas dinner with with him and Hannah. Yeah. And she's like, dude, you gotta get laid. Okay, right. <laughs> like you just look it out for him. Yeah, it's great. It's great from. neighbor. Yeah, and he doesn't have and... any friends. You know, he doesn't have any yeah. friends, especially who are girls. I guess I don't know who his best friend is. Maybe Batista. Deb. You know, and Deb is like his BFF. Weird. But they've gone. They have so much history together that it's yeah. so loaded. Yeah. So it's really nice to see him interact with, like. She's a safe zone yes. and a safe place and his place of normalcy. So it's really cool to kind of see that side of him, his gentle side. And I think it's really important to kind of counteract all that other yeah. stuff, his extracurricular activities. No, it was, it, it was uh, <laughs> a, a way fun to watch you boss Dexter yeah. around. Yeah, I think that's one of my even, favorite even, lines in the series. Well, even the moment with, uh, <laughs> with Quinn where it's like, Stir the pot. <laughs> yeah. Stir. Yeah. Yeah. She's a little bossy, but I love that line where he's like, serial killer yeah. busted by 100 pound nanny. You know what I mean? And you're like, it's... I'm not 100 pounds. Yeah. Right. Well, actually, no. But, uh, but yeah, no, it, it's, it's been nice to kind of see her progression, even, yeah. even to become more womanly. I mean, she's definitely, because she's not only interacting with kids now, yeah. she's much more scantily clothed. This season, <laughs> see her, see her, her naked, maybe or maybe not in every episode, <laughs> and you get to see her like saucy, sensual, yeah. sexy side. It's funny, and I feel more of Quinn. saucy. Yeah, because yeah. of Quinn, and and I feel more saucy on set now. And even yesterday, I was <laughs> for some reason, I, you know, I was doing my scene with Michael. Hashtag it saucy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. I was feeling really <laughs> saucy yesterday, and and I was doing my scene with Michael, 
And, um, and Michael was like, why do I need a girlfriend? I have you. You know what I mean? And I thought, and I got You're like, all, yes, please. Yes, and I got all, I think I'm blushing right now, and I got so red in the face, and I thought, oh, my God, Jamie's becoming so... Yeah. And it's nice. It's nice to be on a show where you're not just stuck in one way. You know, right, you're allowed to Right, because it could be a grow. cliche, sort of. Yeah, I mean, it, right. Yeah. Right, no, and that's what I love about her. I mean, you know, I have three degrees from Northwestern, and, yeah. and I pride myself on being an educated girl, and I love that you guys wrote her in as a... You know, studying child, child psychology, psychology yeah. and um, and really smart, um, and and she's not she's tough when she has to be. You know, she treats Batista very differently. Yeah. I in the scene we just shot on on the beach, I ended up we were rolling, and I got so mad at him, I just hit him. <laughs> you know, and I, I feel very comfortable with David. I hang yeah. out with him all the time in New York. You guys seem like you guys seem yeah. like family. Let's talk about let's talk about that relationship yeah, between sure. Batista and Quinn. I mean, not Batista, Batista and uh, and Jamie. Yeah, there was. On our end, there was there was this one sort of like eye opening moment for us when um, I, forget, I think I think uh, was it season I think it was season seven, and you you stood up to Batista and you called him stupid or something. Oh right. And Batista came to us. I mean, uh, Zayas came. She's yeah. like, uh, little sisters in 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 our culture, little sisters don't come up to us and call us stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and you were like, no, I we we don't. I mean, yeah. You agreed with that whole thing. Yeah, I'll hit him. You'll hit him. Yeah, there's a yeah. whole different. It's a whole like a, a yeah. sort of respect. Yeah. And yeah. it's funny because we're both Puerto Rican. Yeah. So I really loved how Laguerre and Batista would speak Spanish to each other. Yeah. I thought it was really important to keep the like social context of the show in Miami. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so I thought. I would really love to speak Spanish with Angel, and I think that when she gets angry, she probably busts out in Spanish. Like, sure. I speak to my mom in Spanish, and when I get angry, sometimes I just bust out in Spanish, too. Yeah. And um, and luckily, you know, we were able... Michael was like... I think that was the episode Michael was directing, and, yeah. and he's like, sure, no problem. And 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 David is such a gr like specific director that he's like, make sure not to swear in Puerto Rican or Mexican Spanish, because I'm half Mexican, too. And he's like, yeah. make sure to swear in Cuban Spanish. <laughs> and so like, we were like thinking... Because they use different words. Yeah. And so it was just... I feel so comfortable with him. I... I really, I really, it's so natural, I feel. I feel like you guys write so well for these people, and, and it's cast so well, it's so easy. What's well, good I with you guys, yeah. Are you kidding but, me? That's but I great. naturally, like, hug and kiss, you know, David all the time. And, and with Quinn, he's a very, like, sensitive soul. And yeah. and I know he only so likes insecure, to be... So insecure, sort of. Yeah, like, yeah, he, yeah. Does, he I, I see he has, like, a big heart, but I feel like he needs to be you know, deal, dealt with in, in different ways. And, and, and uh, you know, Quinn's a little broken, but I think Jamie sees the man he can become. And, <laughs> and it's the classic, you know, good girl, bad boy getting together. It totally is. Yeah. Um, with, with, uh, with Batista, do you, yeah. guys, you guys talked out the relationship or the history or anything like that? Have you guys thought through those things? I know some yeah. actors go through all that and yeah. some people don't. I don't know. I mean, you know, I did a bunch of theater in Chicago and he obviously, <clears throat> you know, did a bunch of theater in New York and, and I just, when I first, you know, came on the first season, season six for me, I wanted to kind of just touch base with him. He sure. immediately gave me his, you know, cell number. And I was like, look, I just want to kind of work out the logistics of we never lived in the same household because I guess you're older than me. But right. how many brothers and sisters do you think we have? And we kind of just figured out the whole backstory for ourselves. And <laughs> and um, and I, I, I can't be in a scene with him without either kissing him, hugging him, hitting him, um, I just smiling at him. You know, yeah. he's, he's, I think it's like any brother and sister relationship that we see with Dexter and Deb. I mean, they can go from zero to 180 in two seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's very with, real that way. It's yeah. very real. And so I, I felt to bring that, to bring that to the table because I think it's really important to kind of establish that dichotomy and, and set up that history with someone who you just met. Yeah. But have the audience believe that, you guys have been in each other's lives forever. So he is very protective. He doesn't like when I tell him about my sex scenes in no, real life. Not. You know, he doesn't like to... Oh, in real life he does Yeah, in real life. You know, I did a... I did a... Yeah, in real life I did a spread for, you know, men's fitness or something. He's like, I, I, I don't... I don't... Uh, that's... Uh, I don't like it. You know what I mean? And, 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 and yeah, Desmond just likes to... It's just, it's just really... That's just like, where is it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm no. I'm gonna put it up in my uh, yeah. trailer. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's such a sensitive soul. He's so sweet. I, I tease him because he's a little bit like a girl and I'm like walking around naked in front of the crew and he's like, 
um, is everything look okay? This the saying going. I'm like, you look great. You have a great body. Yeah, and I'm like naked. Out, yeah. yeah. I'm like butt naked, telling me you look fabulous. Don't worry about it. My ass is like hanging out. And Quinn's like, I would like to, you know, cover up a little bit. Like it, it was just, it was kind of awesome. <laughs> Ah, Desmond. <laughs> he's so sweet. He is. Yeah. I mean, he's a jerk, but he's, he's yeah. sweet. No, he's not a jerk. Yeah. He thought he thought he was a jerk. I yeah. never said that. I All like right. Desmond. Yeah. Oh, uh, go ahead. No, no. I was just gonna say with that too. I feel like, you know, I feel like Jamie, um, like everyone's kind of on to Dexter in some way, whether they've like seen him arrested, right. or they've- Like Quinn, or Quinn, Quinn has was, this thing yeah. with, with uh, Liddy and- Exactly, yeah. and you know, in season four yeah. or five, I guess, and LaGuardia's obviously on to him, and I just, I, I feel like Jamie is almost a barometer to measure how far we've become, how far like we've gone to Revealing this right. deep dark secret that is. Do you think you know, she would? Do you think if uh, Jamie were to suddenly somehow find out what Dexter does when he's gone till four in the morning? Oh, five she wouldn't morning, believe it. She wouldn't believe it either. So, no. It's a lot like Rita. She's a she's a little bit like a like a stronger, a much a much stronger Rita. Like Rita's yeah. very 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 damaged, and Jamie's Jamie doesn't seem da- she's very yeah. together. Well, that's the thing. I've I've been a fan of the show since it first started airing, and. You know, I loved Rita's. I even felt I even felt like they lit her with so much warmth. And yeah. and and Julie Benz is so naturally likable and warm and effervescent. And it almost seemed like there was a halo above right. her head whenever she was on camera. Like she has a softness to her and a sweetness to her. You know, she was and, told that she couldn't wear makeup that first season. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, she probably doesn't need it. But any actress would be like, what? <laughs> no, she felt um, like she needed it. But yeah, 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 you're like, what about the no makeup makeup look? <laughs> but um, but you know, when I came onto the show, you have to realize you're coming into and I iconic show and you have to know your place and that's why I took it very seriously like what do I add to the show and I realized the innocence that Rita brought and the love goggles for Dexter that she brought was gone and I didn't by any means want to replace that but I felt like that was something that was a layer that Jamie could have where you know I actually took a lot of who Jamie was um, from Batista Batista is an everyman what you see is what you get. Right. There's no ulterior motives. He's his moral barometer is very strong. He's very um he's like very street smart. He's very likable. Yeah. He's very warm. He's effervescent. You know, Dexter asks him for advice about like spirituality and 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 women and he just he really he gives tr- answers it as much as he knows, but they're very heartfelt and genuine. Yes, yeah, he's yeah. very genuine. And so I thought, you know what? Jamie comes from the same stock and I think that she's the same way. Yeah. Like, she has no ulterior motives. What you see is what you get. She's a larger-than-life personality. She's normally happy, and she's a light. You know, there's so much darkness on the show that I feel like, again, it's like joining a band. Right. If there's already a bass player, then don't be a bass player. You know, if you need a drummer. Girl. Yeah, be the tambourine <laughs> girl, the egg shaker, yeah. you know, or, or backup vocals. But yeah. I just thought the show is so good, but I definitely wanted to, you know bring something to the table and I thought you know what I think they hired me because I just I remember the one thing that you guys said as writers was like a larger than life personality and like effervescent unapologeticness you know and I thought well that's kind of how I've always been and so I have to trust that that they just wanted me to be me and um and you know, and and she's smart, but she's not overbearing, and and I just a little controlling, a little controlling. You yeah, see that, you see that with Batista, like that yeah. one scene was it uh, season, uh, last, it was last year, I guess. Yeah. Right with when Batista oh, pulled you aside about Papa's, and you're yeah. like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and she has no screener. It's a bad decision. You know, because yeah. she's like protective of her brother, and she doesn't want to see him yeah. make mistakes. So I and think she knows the kind of mistakes he makes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and she's very, she's very smart, and and again, I think, I think the more that the season, you know, more time she spends with Dexter, the more she feels quite comfortable with him, and it goes yeah. from boss employee to family. Yeah. You know, to walking and, like he in in eight oh five in Little Piggy. Yeah. Uh, he walks into his. He tells you. This has to. This can't happen. Yeah. Walks into his room, closes the door, pulling out his clothes, and suddenly you just not even a knock. Yeah. <laughs> just walk right in the room. Yeah. Much like a sister. Much like like family. Not, yeah. Not uh, not a uh, little you know uh, boss and nanny employee whatever. It was. Yes. Things, the, the 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 power has shifted. Right. And extent. and the formality has changed. It's not yeah. as formal. There's no. She doesn't have to like ask for permission and 
And um, I like that. I like that she puts Dexter in his place, yeah. you know, because it's it's for it's his own good. For his own good. And, I guess and, that's where the controlling thing comes start is starting yeah. to come out a little bit with him. I mean, yeah. not in a bad way, but yeah. In a, I sort of know what's better for you. And much the same way that I sort of want to know what's best for Quinn. Yeah. And for Batista. Yeah, she's a bit of a know it all, I guess. Yeah, and, and it's so, starting to happen with Dexter a little bit. Yeah. 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 But I but I, I do I do really love how you guys have made her just grow up a little bit and and, and even the kid. I mean, he's yeah. you know, he's fantastic. And he's he's, you know, like I, he's asking Michael if if one take didn't go so well he's like why are we doing it again <laughs> and michael's like why actually you know switch the lines around he's like why did you do that <laughs> and michael's like well because i just you know and and it's and and he's great like he knows all the capitals of all the states in the united states and he just and he just he just really it's it's really fun to see michael just be in his element and he's so good like that's the thing that i just you know i i told michael that he kind of screwed screwed me because not Physically, but um, <laughs> the, because um, the kind of through it, right? yeah. So, yeah. because um, like, where do you go from working with someone like Michael? Right. And um, and I kept passing on stuff, you know, during hiatus. And I said, pass, 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 pass. And 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 my team was like, well, what about Gary Oldman? And I'm like, OK, OK, <laughs> I'm like that I could do. And uh, and, and, you know, and I, I tease I tease Michael. I'm like, well, Gary's no Michael. You know what I mean? But but. Uh, but but he really does set such a high bar. Like he's yeah. so good, and um, what well, was it like being directed by him in eight o in eight o two? Like to, it's one thing to like act alongside someone. Yeah. Where you're, I mean, you know, he's a star, but you're yeah. sort of on the same. When you're playing a scene, you guys yeah. work it out. And, right, right, right. But suddenly now, you're playing scenes with him. There are scenes with you and him. Yeah, yeah there are. Yeah. In eight o two. Yeah. And then suddenly he's steps behind the camera. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's. Um, He's an actor's actor, yeah. you know. He's a, uh, he's so he like I really trust him. And it was interesting. I was doing the scene with Quinn in the car in episode two, and I felt so lost in one of the takes, and it mm -hmm. felt like really raw and messy and ugly. And he's like, right, I what loved was that it. scene again? That was the uh... that was the car scene where he she gets in a fight with him because she's. Because he's looking at texts from Deb, and, oh, right, right, and right, so right, she right. slams the door and and you know runs into the house and screams at Batista for being in her right. business, being bossy, being bossy, <laughs> older brother protective. But um, but you know the take that I was most apprehensive about, he was like, I loved it. That was great. Uh -huh. And I think if it was any other director, you would kind of wonder if you could really trust them. But I feel like he can pick up on nuances because right. he's like an actor so he can see those things and um and he's so well prepared he was, he's yeah. so lovely you know he's you realize what a great actor he is when you see the various roles the m the m m c and cabaret on broadway and then he does you know this wonderfully you see complex no. no just uh, on yeah, youtube yeah, yeah, you know yeah. this wonderfully complex like gay man in yeah, six David. feet under yeah. and then this lovable charming and you know to me it's like a testament like how do you root for someone who takes the lives of so many yeah and it's because michael he's different than hannibal lecter where it's is. like you like to watch him but you wouldn't want to be near him yeah what's weird about texture yeah. what michael did with dexter is people would want to be would want to work for him but they yeah want to he's be a vigilante they'd want to, yeah. you know so i think that it's a true testament to how good he is and yeah. and you know even coming on the show when you're <clears throat> coming on a show that's been on the air for so long you never know if number one on the call sheet is going to be cold or right. or or what but as soon as the cameras are rolling he's completely present and really listening to you to the point where if you're saying hogwash and messing things up he doesn't just start talking when you stop and phone right. it in even though he could you know because it's season eight, right. he's just so present that you could see that he's like, huh? What are you doing? Yeah, and, and you're thinking, I was like, I was just testing you, making sure you were paying attention. I but, bet he likes that. Yeah, but he's he's just wonderful, and I could tell he's, you know, he loves his space, and I love to, as a Latin person, get all up in there, and, and I'm very touchy-feely. You are very huggy. Yeah, I yeah. do. I hug, and I, and, um, you know, now I just broke him down. Now he knows. I'm whenever I'm like, I hug him, and, but you also have to know when to give him his space, and yeah. it's funny, I, I feel yeah, like kill days, you give him some space. On kill days, yeah. I give him space, and, and that's what Jamie does. Like, I can read Michael. I know when he's tired. I know right. when he's, 
you know, starting to get sick because he's been out in the water with, you know, in a wetsuit and freezing cold weather, like, right. um, all night. So you just read him and you know when to just let him go. And I can tell when he wants to maybe be a little bit more social, he'll float closer to the vicinity. And, yeah. and then, you know, it's a very yeah. sweet thing where I can pick up his nuances um, in between takes. And I feel like hopefully that segues into season eight where a lot of our scenes, I think I just say with my eyes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where, where we communicate kind of non-verbally, which you kind of pick up that second hand when you spend a lot of time with someone. And she yeah. essentially, like I said, is the closest thing that he has to a wife. And it, w it wasn't for her keeping his personal life in order. He wouldn't be able to do what he does. I mean, what do you right. do if you have a kid and obviously the kid can't take care of himself. You don't have family. He doesn't have friends. You can just drop him off at. Yep. So she becomes instrumental. Can't keep him in the car. Yeah. <laughs> Stay she, here. Yeah. So she becomes, you know, instrumental in him being able to function. And um, and I also think this season he's starting to not only become more human but like being human. Yeah. I think back in the day, you know, what it scares we, him, but yeah, it scares sure, him. Yeah. And and I think this season you really start to explore like a psychopath lacks empathy, which right. is what Vogel is constantly talking about. And and Mike and you know Dexter's like I'm not like that. Right. I and he's starting to feel like he's not a monster, and um, and Vogel's like stick to what you do. Yeah. Either just be a monster. Don't try to, don't try this human thing. But I think Jamie really brings out the human in him. She has Absolutely. nothing to do yeah. with Miami Metro. She has nothing to do with forensics. She is, doesn't know his secret. She's not onto him. So she only interacts with him as a normal human being. Yep. Every single interaction with him, it's not sexual. Yep. It's just a very normal human-to-human -human interaction. And because he's becoming more human and liking it, she's, you know, in that world. And so I just, it's it's exciting. It's fun to watch. It's Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. I can even tell, like, when Michael is in his zone and me as Amy, I'm trying to, like, get him out of it. And, <laughs> and it's just, you know, my, one of my favorite things to do in scenes with him is just make him smile. Right. And I don't know if I do that like subconsciously or what, but I just, I I love making Michael laugh. Yeah. And I feel like you know what, Jamie does too. You right. know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, it's yeah. it's fun because I do think you need kind of that light on the show because yeah. um, it kind of balances you know everything out. There was, a, there was another uh, yeah there was another fun moment too, uh, sort of like that where you got to see Dexter's pr pr little more protective side, and that was when um, Hannah had. had Came came over came over to the house and uh, Jamie's in her bathing suit. Yeah, yeah playing with the kid and then, yeah. and then Jim Beaver, who's like a fantastic actor. <laughs> yeah, like gives the once over and suddenly it's gross. And yeah, you saw this moment where, uh, where where Dexter where Michael stepped up. Yeah, <laughs> and the attitude, but the attitude that you gave him was so fun. It was so interesting. It, and I don't even know if it was necessarily on the on the page. Yeah, that day there was. Was, I don't know. Yeah, I do feel like Dexter protects her, and you know he's very protective of Harrison, obviously. Yes. And 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 Jamie and Harrison are kind of like a package deal. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, so yeah, I yeah, I, yeah, I feel absolutely. like he'd be lost without her. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that that she teaches Harrison things that he can't. Yeah. If he's darkness, I think he really thinks, what do I want to pass on to my son? Yeah. Do I want to pass on this darkness? And he's like, I don't want to. I want to give him light and hope and innocence. And that's what Jamie brings, you know, yeah. Jamie. Um, and, and I think even in, in, you know, later episodes, you start to kind of see, I just realized they've just seen say right. anything, say right. anything, anything. But, um, <laughs> but you know, where, where Harrison's growing up and, you know, you kind of start to ask questions and yeah, we all, we've like often that. We've often talked in the room about moments Sometimes they ended up on, on screen, sometimes not. But where Dexter's able to bounce things off of Jamie, beca one because of because of who you are, yeah. But also because you're the child psychologist. Like, is this normal? Yeah. Because um, everything that Dexter sees in his child, like if he sees it was it was a few seasons ago. Was it four or five? I forget. Uh, or six it was six. Oh, where he cuts where the he kid. where he cuts the kid. Yeah. And it's and so when, when Dexter sees something that you know any other parent sees right. something sees a moment like that and they think the kids do that don't right. worry about it but when Dexter Morgan serial killer sees that he thinks oh my god my son, my son is just, is a serial killer and I feel like Jamie was someone who, who even helped him out in those sort of moments definitely you know, to say this is no it's a normal kid don't worry yeah about it. and even He's like wonderful. with the toys he hasn't you killed know? me yet <laughs> yeah and it's like you have to let things go right. they grow up they change and the definition of change is not 
being the same, which right. means that you have to let go of some things. You have to mourn what you let go of. And and she, I, she, I think even like we did a scene, you know, on the beach the other day, and I couldn't, I couldn't say hi to Harrison without picking him up and hugging right. him. And and I think that. Uh, but that's weird for ki- for kids, like to come yeah. in and you've got this wonderful Amy Jamie standing around and playing <laughs> around, and then you got to go home to their parents. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's fun. You know, I love to play with them. Do you like kids normally? Is this like a, or is this sort of a whole I didn't until this show. I'm really, like I said, I'm a dude trapped in a girl's body. I don't know how to hold babies. I'm not really into like, I'd rather just. That's probably why it works so well. I don't know. I just, I'd rather watch sports than go shopping. I'm not, (laughs) I'm not really a girly girl. You know, I, 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 um, just because my formative years, I was surrounded by guys. I right. mean, I, I would even check out girls at some point and give them elevator eyes because I would monkey the behavior of my <laughs> friends. And um, I've wondered. I'm like, do I bat on the other team? And I'm like, no, I definitely don't. But, um, but you know, I love beautiful women, and they inspire yeah. me. And But I, I really get along better with, with men. Um, although lately, my girlfriends have become, you know, yeah. like, awesome. And But, um, but... No, not until the show. And now I, I'm getting a kick out of them. You know, yeah. they're just fun, and I'm learning new things, and and they ask questions that are just, you know, Shocking. so obvious to everyone else. <laughs> yeah. And and I love. I wish I would have taken a picture. There was a moment yesterday where Michael was laying on the couch, and 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 Jaden saw Michael lay on the couch, so he laid on the couch, and they both were looking up, and they were just <laughs> looking up in the same way. And and Jaden was like. Do you think anybody walks up there? And Michael's like, you know, I never thought of that, but uh, I guess sometimes the sound guy. But it does. Like they were just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, like real, like, like, it's like a real parent. Yeah, yeah like yeah, real parent, parent just, just, you know, shooting. Yeah, yeah. As, as, and it was just so nice to see Jaden kind of pull Michael out of his zone, which, yeah. which is so fun, you yeah. know. And and I, and and he's great. I mean, he's a total pro. Um, I think he was booked on a commercial yesterday, and he's like, I was booked on a commercial, but I had to tell them I was already booked on Dexter. <laughs> and um, It's like he, only in L.A. Yeah, yeah, he calls me on my continuity. He's like, I think, uh, I go, was I it on my right hand? I thought you were going right to say hand? sell. No, no. <laughs> I know. It's like, Jaden. <laughs> I know. He's like, I'm like, is this, a, this is ketchup on my right hand or left hand? And and um, like and he's just great. You know, he takes direction really well, and and he loves Michael. He loves yeah. being on set. He That's won't even good. leave, like, to go on a you know, food break or something. That's what you want. So much fun. That's what I said when the kids are not yeah. into it. No, they love it, and he knows That's his great. lines. And so about Lewis. To like him. Oh, yes. Let's, let's step Lewis. back in time a little bit here. Yes, the, retro. Because uh, that was another That was another, uh, another pretty big moment mm-hmm. for, for Jamie. She yeah. meets this nice guy. He's a little nerdy. Yeah, in your head, what, what, what was the, the draw for Jamie to this guy? I mean, yeah, I'd look. love to know that actually because <laughs> I told him I was like, I don't buy Jamie going for this guy oh, at all. No, I, no, honestly, I <laughs> I've you know I've always loved like like geeks, like yeah. nerds. I mean, my ex boyfriend is was a computer programmer. Oh wow! You know, and I was like Alt A, Alt B. It just made me so hot. <laughs> and I, you know, it's like opposites attract, and right. I love people who so that like. Makes sense I mean, I used to go to Comic Con. Like years ago, when I was the only girl there without green hair, right? And now it's become you know this larger than life kind of event. But I remember going by myself, <laughs> no one in the car with me, and I would stop at the Sandcastle competition next door and see this larger than life Darth Vader, you know, built right. out of sand, and and I would just love it, and I would love like the Japanese animation wing, and and just sit there by myself, and I was like, right. oh my god, I'm such a. And you I sort thought, of drew from yourself. It sounds like then, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've always loved. I've always had a thing for geeks my whole right. life, you know, and so there's a lot of geeks out there like, oh god, <laughs> but um, <laughs> because they're smart, it, it really is like I've always liked smart people. Right. I've always thought smart was sexy, and um, and so with Lewis, and I collected really... comic books since I was a kid, you know. So yes, me too. Yeah. Still do. Yeah. So Lewis, I I totally bought it. Like he's. Yeah. He's nerdy and so smart, and and I thought she thought it was really sexy that he came up with something totally different, right. you know, like this this game, and he was able to capture her brother so perfectly and yeah. come up with a whole thing for it. And I think, you know, in her head, that's very entrepreneurial. Yeah. It's really creative in a really cool way. And, and that um, apartment. <laughs> yeah, and that apartment was like, I mean, it was a little weird. The David but it Mack was like, stuff on the wall. The yeah. Big, the big geishas. Well, you know me, Samurai I love geishas. David yeah. Mack. Yeah. yeah, so I think, you know, I think Jamie isn't like your typical... Cuban Miami girl that yeah. like lays out all day long. I think that she's just 
you know, multidimensional and loves things that are different than her. And yeah. she's not like dating some Latin guy because that's what her parents want. She's dating whoever she wants. You know, right. she's dating Lewis. He's totally different than her. She's this, he's this geeky, like white guy. And, and a lot of money. Yeah, with a lot of money, which I guess doesn't, <laughs> doesn't hurt, hurt, but <laughs> definitely not hopefully dating him for the money. I don't think she's that kind <laughs> no, of girl. No, no. But, um, but, you know, she finds the brain just attractive as other body parts. Right. So um, <laughs> I totally bought it. And I think she was really crushed, you know. Yeah. I think. I yeah, think, that's, yeah, that's like the yeah. scene where, where, uh, where Dexter, unbeknownst to Jamie, yeah. sets him up, you know, sends, finds those tapes of, uh, of Lewis with the prostitute. Yeah. With his little. Uh, video blogs that he, that he used to make for himself. Yeah. And then uh, you watched it. Yeah. Waited for him to come home, watched yeah. it in front of him. Yeah, and I think she's just <laughs> devastated. Yeah. You know, I think she's, she's young, she's smart, and she gives every relationship like a thousand percent and right. thinks it's like, they're the one, right. you know what I mean? And and she like adored him and thought he was so funny and cute, like maybe a little quirky, but but just whatever, you know, quirky <laughs> could be fun. And and maybe they were like, you know, a little naughty in the bedroom <laughs> and came up with cool, fun things to do. And I think she was just absolutely devastated and heartbroken. And then when he has the balls and the audacity to even point the finger at someone that she just admires and yeah. and and respects so much. It's Dexter. just I mean and he's it's right. Just, <laughs> yeah, and he's right. But it's just I I love those moments on the show. Yeah. I love those moments where people are like uncovering the curtain and yeah. showing, you know, what's everybody's really happening. right. Everybody's Lewis is right, right in that right. moment. And you are completely Comple completely, completely right. wrong. No, no, yeah. but you were completely oh. right too though. Oh breaking up with a guy because he's... Right, yeah. right, exactly. But I love those moments where people are totally right about Dexter. Yeah. And then in the same totally. breath, the people are completely, you know, grounded in their convictions of being right in protecting him. Yeah. So I love those moments where she's like, oh, really? You're telling... You're, you're asinine. And this is crazy <laughs> where you're accusing my boss, who is a total... He doesn't even know how to flirt with girls. <laughs> he doesn't even know how to do anything. You know, he wouldn't yeah. hurt a fly. And that's what I told Michael the other day. I said, oh, I love... Every girl loves that character yeah. who isn't like the aggressive her. Yeah. Like Dexter's always the guy that that's in the corner and that's kind of sexy and the girls are like, who's that guy? You know, <laughs> and they're like, go for it, Dex. And women come to him. Yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. He's not a pursuer. Yeah. Like Lila came to him. Rita was set up to him. Like Until he Hannah. Yeah, until yeah. Hannah. Hannah, he started being, thinking he was drawn being, towards yes, her. Yes, yeah. and being more of a hunter. But up until her, I feel yeah. like he's used to having the babes just come to him. So I thought, it's like, it's, why not? <laughs> hey, he's just so charming, you know? So there's something really nice about him, you know? And, and I think Jamie sees him that way. So when Lewis says, accuses him of being proactive Set in this way, <laughs> she's like, you're, you know, you're just ridiculous and <laughs> and gets really offended and... You know, I think she was just really heartbroken, but in typical Jamie fashion, she gets back on the horse, yep. literally, and um, and now is on to this bad boy. Are you calling Quinn a horse? Hey, is that what's going on hey, here? You know, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but um, let's talk about Quinn and Jamie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a lot more. It's it's a different sort of. Uh, what what do you think she sees in Quinn that makes it w work mostly? Right. I mean. Yeah. Because there's a little bit of jealousy at the top of the season. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know if it's jealousy. It's just, like, sort of worried, right? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, like, you know, not only is this woman your ex-girlfriend, she's yeah. your ex-fiance. Yeah. I mean, you asked her to marry you. Yeah. Because which... you found the ring for, yeah. for her. Yeah, exactly. It's not even, like, uh... oh, we should talk about that first. Yeah. The Deb and Jamie yeah. relationship. Mm. Mm -hmm. Not exactly. <laughs> Because that was another, I think that was one of my episodes, too, where, where they you guys had the, 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 big, the big fight. Yeah. Yeah, they I like, like each that. Other, Jennifer, but they like each other, but they don't. Yeah, Jennifer is like this force of nature, man. Yeah. Like, you have to be there. You know what I mean? Because, and you can't miss a beat with her. Yeah. Like, she is just, she really is like a force of nature. And, um, and it was just so fun. I felt like I had a workout after I did that scene. And it was just, <laughs> you know, I, I, I had like this high. And I, I wish I could do more scenes with her. I mean, she's great. I'd love just, you know, going, having the opportunity to go toe to toe with her and in, in protection of Harrison. Right. Um, and um, and you know I think it's like anytime you have a show with two strong-willed women, right. um, it's gonna it's, happen. It's, it's gonna happen. And uh, and you know I, I think that they've they've come around and 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 like any good television show, just when you think that they've made their peace, 
there's a riff because of yeah. Quinn. And right. Quinn kind of creates another riff between her and Deb. And um, Because I don't know if you know, I mean, if you listen to the podcast, uh, Desmond thinks that uh, Deb was his, was his one. Oh. That well, I did not know the, that. The scenes, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That that Quinn Quinn she was it she was sort of the one and now he's sort of heartbroken and it's not yeah. really settling it's just like that was his in his like world it's not mean that he can't love other people yeah but this was the one that he thought I should have married her I should have run off with her yeah and I think been. that's what bugs Jamie I think it's yeah. even like look, it's not a he, rebound necessarily but it sort of is yeah. a little bit I mean if even if he were just if it was some girl that he used to you know or whatever right. that's fine but it's a girl that even commands his attention when Jamie's in the car. Yes. So when they're, they're in the car together and his thoughts are with her texting her. Yeah. They're in, you know, in, like, the restaurant together and he's thinking about someone else. Like, it's yeah. just... He, I, he gets up in the middle of the night and leaves and... Yeah, and he li- lies, lies to her. So she's like, you and know... And he's right. That, I love that little moment because it's... Quinn's absolutely right because if I told you I was going to, to see Deb, you'd get all upset. Yeah. <laughs> so if I don't tell you, then you won't be upset. And yeah. If you find out, you're going to be really upset. So it's, yeah. It's a, and I like to think that, like, that Jamie's way. a cool girl and lets things kind of, you know, yeah. like, but, but yeah, she just, one. it's yeah. a weird one and they work closely together and she keeps calling him all the time and it's his ex fiance and yeah. he was in love with her and it's just, And then just Batista weird. has a, quite a relationship with Deb too. Like, she yeah. she had said, if I, you know, you're like family to me. You're like my big brother. Yeah. In some ways, Batista is everybody's big brother. Yeah. On the show. You yeah. Know, he, he, I think he even feels that way toward Dexter, even though Dexter may or may not feel <laughs> yeah. reciprocated. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, but I think she sees that Quinn has potential. Yeah. You know, I think she she sees that he's smart. She sees that he has a big heart. She sees that he has really good instincts. Right. She sees that he has the potential to be a really good sergeant. And... Um, and, you know, and I get it. Like, I, I, I think that every young girl wants to fix a guy. Right. Yeah. You know what he's, I mean? He's one of those guys that needs fixing. That's true. Yeah, yeah he yeah. just needs a little TLC. And, and you know what? And, the, like, the sex is probably great, yeah, too. Yeah. Really, really, really important, you know? And, yeah. and I think she's really... And I also think there's a little bit of her knowing it might piss off. I mean, she's she bro- it is. She's the not brother, this angel. You know Batista what I mean? doesn't like it. No, but Speaking of like angel. It, which which just <laughs> encourages it even more. I mean, she's yeah. not and even like her wording where if you don't treat me with respect, I will you know what I mean? Where <laughs> That's how you met, basically. Well, that's how we met. And I feel like it's not and I gotta tell you, <laughs> even people on seven. Twitter, they're like, Oh my god. I cannot believe those words came out of Nanny's mouth. <laughs> I can't believe they came out of Babysitter's mouth. And and like people like that. People yeah. loved to see but that she's real. dark yeah. side of her, you yeah. know. And, and and not that she's Dexter. Well, dark. it was sort of said flirtily. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, 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 I'm yeah, sure yeah. she, you know, <laughs> but um, but yeah, I think that that she sees that he's really. Because he was wounded adorable. still at, yeah. that, at that point. Yeah. yeah, I think he was a bit of a broken. Because he had just guy. come off of. He just come off dating a stripper. Yeah, yeah, jeez, from stripper to to innocent nanny, it's a great track record. She really knows how to pick them. But um, but yeah, I mean, I think and I think she trusts him. I think something se- something sexy about an older guy, yeah. something sexy about a guy who's a cop, yeah. you know, and can like protect which is the, her. The brother, which is her brother. Yeah, I know that. You know, that's it's all like a lot of, of girls date guys who are similar to their dad, which yeah. is kind and guys the same date girls that are similar to their mom, which. I don't know if it's weird or makes sense no, it's or weird. whatever, it but, make sense. It's horrible, but but but, but yeah, you know it's it's true. It's true. And <laughs> yeah. so I think that she she kind of likes that. She knows that world and she feels safe with him. And right. and I think that uh, he hit on her before and you know said yeah, yeah. like I want to make babies with that <laughs> ass and and um, and she yeah she thinks he's cute and hot and smart and and really wants to see him be a non like messed up guy yeah, you know yeah. and i think that he's, he's sort of floating he Quinn is at this point yeah he's, and he's, he's showed up to work a, drunk yeah you know he's dabbled with like drugs he's just i mean me personally i've always been money. attracted to like the bad boy because right. i was so you know 4.7 grade point average like straight a <laughs> student and i loved i remember in seventh grade like would come in with his hands smelling like smoke and i'd be like <laughs> Oh my God! He just smoked at lunch. That's so bad, but so hot, you know. So, so every girl yeah. has dated the bad guy, and and he really Quinn isn't. Smokes. Yeah, he definitely he definitely he smokes. smokes. But um, you know, she just finds his recklessness kind of 
sexy, right. I think. And um, and we'll see where it goes. But I, I really like them together. And, and yeah. he's really funny. Yeah. You know, like he I is. never thought... Well, he came of... from comedy. Like Desmond came from comedy, oh, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I never He was like a Lauren of... Michael find or something. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's really funny. Yeah. And, and I just... I, he cracks me up, you know? And it was funny. Our, actually, our first scene this season was to the wall, sex. Oh, that's right. Naked. You've had a few of those and, this and, season. And a few of those. But our first scene together, and, and Scott Buck came in and was like, look, in this scene, in this bedroom the scene. The showrunner Scott Buck. Yeah, yeah the showrunner Scott Buck. Um, you have to portray a six-month relationship and uh, comfortableness with each other. Right. Uh, go. You know, so so we were like, okay, you know, so of course I'm worried. I'm like, oh God, does my butt look okay? And he's like, is my tan cool? Like, you know, you have these actor neuroses. He's got, got the tan. Yeah. yeah, he's got the tan going on. I mean, there's there's you have these actor neuroses, you know, yeah. that, that you're thinking of, but you also have to convincingly interact with each other in a very physical way. Right. With grips sitting around you too, right? Yeah, yeah. with grips. And I got to tell you, I mean, I. I watched playback because he he wanted to watch playback, so I would you know right. watch it as well. And and we were like laughing, and he would like grab my butt and squeeze, and <laughs> and and it was just I I was really proud of working with such a great actor because he just he's like, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it, okay? I'm just right. gonna start talking dirty to you, and I'm like, go for it, you know? Just <laughs> and I said, whatever, I will go on that journey with you. Yeah, yeah. And so that is what I can say about the show is that the actors like jump off the cliff, you know, yeah. and you guys write scenes that give us like air to breathe. Well, we feel and... safe that we can with all you guys. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, There's never a moment can't... where we think, uh, can they do this? Yeah, no. but I feel like TV kind of lives and dies by the writing. I always say like theater is an actor's medium and film is a director's medium and TV is a writer's medium. Mm -hmm. And I really do think that it starts on the page and it's just so easy. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. another thing. I feel that's like nice. you guys have kind of, it's like, where do you go from here? You know, yeah. when it's all over, it's like, it's, it's hard to find, a, I mean, you know, the other day, like Jennifer's dancing and, 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 you know, we'll go and race cars together, like on the airstrip and, right. and with Wally, this, the stunt coordinator. Crowder, and, yeah. and, and it's like not every day that you find a girl that you can just, you know, I trusted her and I'm yeah. in her car going 95 miles an hour in her, you know, Range Rover. And then it's, <laughs> and I like trust her. And yeah. I thought, wow, it we're is not like a family, set. man. It's been, yeah, I, I really, I've been on since the first season. You've been on since yeah. season five. Five, right? Yeah, and I find myself getting very protective of Michael. Like, if we're shooting yeah. on location and people are coming up, I I find the, like, Puerto Rican spitfire <laughs> in me just just getting very protective of him, you yeah. know, and very protective of, of Jaden or, you know, when the twins were playing Harrison. Like, are you guys okay? Are you guys... Yeah. I just... And and I really do. I do feel like it's it's a family. And, uh, and I have to even say, like, um, uh, Lauren... You know, uh, Lord Gorda, yeah. Oh, no, uh, no. Oh, Lord. oh, yeah. Yeah, when, my, when she, she, the Gorda, you know, it's, 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 uh, she welcomed me with open arms and, and hugged me and she was like, welcome to the show. And, yeah. and, and she's, and she's so warm. So yeah. warm. And, and David's so warm. And, and, uh, you know, Desmond, we just love, we, we both love like high tops, you know, so we yeah. talk about like <laughs> cars and, 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 and documentaries. Like he loves documentaries. So yeah. now I've been he's exposed. A movie head. It's been he's fun. a movie and he yeah. loves documentaries. And so I just have watched all these, you know, documentaries that he recommends and, and I'm really going to miss everyone. So yeah. I, I, you know, we'll, we'll see, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think, um, I'm excited for to see how it all ends. I mean, people keep asking me like, "How do you think it's gonna end?" And and I, I, you know, I can't get anything out of Michael. And no, I, I. <laughs> we're not going to tell you. No, <laughs> I, and that's what I say on the show. Like, we're kept in the dark just as much as everybody else. Like, you guys won't give us the last scene in the series, right? You know what I mean? We're on a need to know. <laughs> I have no idea when or if Jamie's or, gonna yeah. die, and um, you know. I mean, it's 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 a really cool show, and I have no idea how you keep things in the social media age so secret. It's tough. I really have to hand it to you. Yeah, there's all sorts of, yeah, we get pictures leak out all the time. But... I mean, I'm so paranoid, I shred all my scripts, because I feel like people will break into my car right. if they see a Dexter script. And, and it's got your name on it. It's got which, my name yeah, on their watermark. Last thing you so want to know. So every page has my name on it. Yeah. And uh, I'm so paranoid, I... 
I just, you know, I have to shred them because I, <laughs> you don't, I, want to be the I don't want to be the leak. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm excited. I don't know how you end an epic series, but uh, good luck with that, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see how it works out. Yeah. I think it's going to be great. I think yeah. It's gonna be great. With you guys, it's going to be great. Yeah. Do you feel, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm just yes. going to interview you for two Giant minutes. Pressure. I don't do know ahead. how much time we have, do but it. my journalism major wants, I feel like you deserve <laughs> to be interviewed. How do you, um, like, how do you guys get inspired? And because because you guys are parents and you guys are fathers and mothers and you guys come up with the most messed up stuff <laughs> that I could possibly imagine. And oh, yet you guys parents are, like, are very messed up. It doesn't <laughs> matter. It's... I mean, I can't believe you guys look so even you're wearing a button down shirt. And I'm like, how does Scott come up with this stuff? So how do you like get inspired and how do you just kind of jolt yourself out of stuff that's already been done? You know, well, constantly we're reminding ourselves, like, well, in the room, you know, we get the, we get the, the writer's room, and so there's nine, ten of us in that room at all times. Yeah. Not at all times, but most times. Yeah. And we're all pitching story, pitching ideas, and inevitably we do forget. Inevitably we'll be like, yeah, we did that in episode 406. <laughs> yeah. You remember that moment? We're like, oh, yeah. yeah, I think I pitched that moment, too. Yeah. You know, you're doing it again. Um, I don't know. Everybody's different. Like, I see a lot of movies. Yeah. I have uh, Google alerts. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, are it's a lot like of the... real life, a lot, a lot of uh, serial killer Google alerts and stuff like that. Um, but it's a, it's a lot of the safety, the same sort of safety that you have on the, on the that you talk about on the set. Yeah, we have in the writers' room. You okay. know, there's no, there's, there's, I mean, there's bad ideas, and we'll yeah. shoot each other down. You yeah, know, whatever. But there's a, there's a sort of a lot of, uh, we all trust each other. Yeah, with, I mean, we've been together for like eight years, so we trust right. each other with everything. We're very open about everything, and you have to sort of take down all of your um, ego. All your ego, but also uh, <clears throat> sort of your protections that you put up. The things right. that you can't be afraid that you're going to say something awful and everyone's going to be like, oh, I can't believe Scott said that. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Where's Jesus now, Scott? You know? Right, right, right. <laughs> you just have to be completely open to any and all ideas. Yeah. You know? That um, is so what I, I will say. How. I do feel like when I read a Dexter script, I don't think of it as like a job. I like, Tear it out of the messenger's <laughs> hand, say thank you, and then go and read it, like reading right. a really good book. So and you read the whole thing? Oh, yeah. I right. read it right. I, well, right. first I want to know if I'm dead. Right. You know, I never <laughs> know. That's the crazy I mean, about that. everyone's head happen. is on the chopping block when you're in a yeah. show about a serial killer. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I just want to make sure that, I, I just, I like, I want to know what happens. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know, you guys somehow have a way to consistently blow our minds, even though we're like... We know these there, people so well. But are there moments I mean? when you're when you're reading it and you're like, uh, Jamie wouldn't do that. I mean, no, I mean, not really. Even yeah. like I said with Lewis, I got it. Like with, right. with. I mean, the only thing I was thinking. Go. Oh, geez. <laughs> do it. Oh man. No, honestly, the only moment I had. I think it's already aired. By this point, um, yeah, it it has. Okay. Where she's. Giving him punishment sex. Oh, that was great, though. So, so I was like, <laughs> everybody for that moment, just so you know, on the writer's side, yeah, everyone was like, oh yeah, that happens. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I, I, I told you, I think like a dude. So right. I, my, I was like blown. I was like, would do girls really do this? Like, which I thought was actually kind of cool. I was like, that's actually awesome. How is sex ever punishment? But I thought. The scene was the scene was yeah. uh, on top. Quinn Quinn had just gotten in a fight mm -hmm. at Papa's bar. Mm -hmm. It's very embarrassing. Not a good thing. It was a fight over defending over the Deb. honor of Deb. Yeah, stinking Deb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, and then the next time we see the two of you, rather than having like a big a big blowout argument or yeah. just the sort of stuff that we've seen a million times before, uh, I forget who pitched it. Somebody somebody was like, "Oh no, it should be punishment sex." And everyone everyone was like, "Oh yeah, yeah." And, I, and <laughs> experience. And, and, that. Well, that's the thing. Even at first. I was like, I don't know if Jamie, you know, because you get protective right. of your light. characters and you want her to be like a certain. Way. But then I thought, you know what? This is genius. And I did. I don't know which take they're gonna pick, but at one point I'm like, oh, you mean it hurts right here? <laughs> oh, when I go like this, On oh, the and right he got here, yeah. oh, right here. And he was just like, oh, you want to look? There was like a playfulness to it. Yeah. So I don't know like what take yeah, they're gonna use. It's not mean necessarily, but it's, like, but it's yeah. But it's like, I'm how upset. can a guy be that mad when you're writing him? How right, mad right. can he really be? <laughs> right. But then I thought, you know what? That's actually genius. And I thought that was really cool. But that was the only moment where I thought. It almost seems like she's like Satanistic or something, right. or or this other side of her that yeah. that we haven't seen before, and it didn't seem consistent with the character yeah. that was kind of developing over three years. But then I thought, you know what? 
because it is yeah. sort of it's, it's it was still playful. I love you, but however, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I thought you know when in typical guy fashion, and I feel like she has that element in her. They communicate with behavior, right? And so she can't be that mad at you if she's naked Heavy on sex, top of right, you. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually thought that was genius. But that, other than that, no, I thought Funny. it was. Yeah, I, I love her. She's so cool. I wish I wish I was as cool as she is. Like it, it's really, I mean, yeah, I, I really like her. I'll, I. Do you take home her clothes? She dresses oh, very bright, very yeah. small. I asked I asked um, Kathleen, who's our costume designer, said, "How would you describe Jamie's wardrobe?" And she's like, "I would describe it as." constantly almost falling off and i thought yep that's pretty accurate it's yeah, either bikini but it's very miami too yeah. yeah i mean those are some short shorts, some shorts. you know what i mean and and it's funny because sometimes you don't know how they're going to edit it together right. and i look at the episodes and i'm like they're only showing my legs john Do- yeah that's a john doll episode yeah and uh <laughs> the only thing you see are uh my legs and my buttocks you know and so, whatever, I just take it, and I'm but flattered. A of, but a lot of the time, that it's also because Michael C. Hall's down, True. down low, irritated, irritated. And, True. And, and, you, and, you know, they're always watching Michael's face a lot of right. times. Right, right, right. No, but, but it's... But, yes. Yeah. yeah. The legs and body, it's fine. Right? Yeah, it's but fine. it's, you know, but it's 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 cool. I mean, I, I don't mind being, you know, the skin on the show. And, and she, you know, she's a Miami girl. And I got to right. tell you, every girl from Miami... A bikini is like their pajamas. Right. So they're much more comfortable in a bikini than in jeans. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I think it's very, um, very consistent with a Miami girl. She just has this, like, effervescent kind of feel to her. And, yeah, uh, yeah I'm it's curious. Sort of, it's, it's slightly, it's sort of, uh, you know, I have, like, an eight-year-old, a nine-year-old, yeah. eight-year-old. And uh, sometimes she'll come out wearing little tiny skirts and shirts. And it's just, but it's just because she's just comfortable. Yeah. I'm like, Arr. yeah, and I think she's the only character who would wear bright blue, bright nail, blue polish, nail polish, which I actually decided on this episode because there's a lot of close-ups with her on the phone. I thought, no other character on Dexter is gonna wear bright aqua nail polish. And I asked our key makeup. I said, hey, do you think that Jamie for her birthday could just go all out and wear this right. color nail polish? And he's like, of course. And I thought, you know, it just I feel like I have freedom to bring. Right. Um, I don't feel suffocated on the show. I mean, you guys are such a well-oiled machine yeah, it's that it's, like, years. insane, it's you know? And so it's very easy, I think, to just come in and not be given any room to do anything because they're like, um, little girl, we're, we've are we been Emmy-nominated. Uh, our star is a Golden Globe winner. Um, back up off of us, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, it yeah. could go that way. It's very way. collaborative. But it's very collaborative, yeah. and I feel very open to, like, come in with ideas and yesterday I even thought you know we haven't seen Jamie study in a while so in the next episode the writer didn't say what I was doing they're just like Jamie answers Dexter's call so I said I would really love if Jamie could just be studying so that we remind uh you know people that she's a student yeah 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 and they were really open to it so there's room for that you guys aren't like Jamie is doing this at all times just like Jamie picks up a phone call from Dexter right in the apartment and I put my I was on the couch yeah Yeah, I took my 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 shoes off and I was on Dexter's couch and I just felt like Dexter's apartment is her home away from home yeah so um yeah she's pretty lucky and it's an escape from Batista yeah now that you live with Batista in the the LaGuardia money house yeah (laughs) Which is actually oh geez yeah, but it's nice to see Batista in, in sweatpants. I think all I don't think we've ever seen him in sweatpants. Is that the novellas? Yeah, 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 watching a telenovela. The telenovelas. Yeah, that was so yeah, funny. Yeah, so I thought it was it was really. What nice. I like too is that it wasn't <laughs> Jamie wasn't sitting down with him to watch this. Oh no! She, I, like I don't know if she watches them. Pro- probably doesn't at no. all. <laughs> but Batista, no. old school Batista, stuff, watches <laughs> yeah. his watches yeah. his soaps. Yeah, I thought that was really <laughs> sweet, and I love our set. Like I love our yeah. apartment. It's very Jessica warm. Jessica Kendrick's amazing. Yeah. She's yeah. Good job. So it's um yeah I just I have a dream, dream job and. Uh, Isn't it amazing? We get to sit around, and yeah. make believe and about serial killers yeah. and make it funny and scary and yeah i mean i gotta say you know even you know on hiatus dangerous. i did you know robocop, robocop. And, and as you know it was batman on my right and commissioner on my michael left keaton between and, michael yeah. keaton and gary oldman oh and like you said you're like that's what i'm thinking batman commissioner you know the commissioner of batman <laughs> With robo freaking With, cop <laughs> yeah and you know that was really cool and, the, and it's this you know franchise and yeah and and you feel pressure and, there no, that's the thing. It's like after working with Michael, right. you know, you're doing your close up and it's and it's, you know, this big budget movie. It's a franchise that MGM wants to, you know, kind of really be successful and right. it's one of the biggest movies of two, you know, 2014 and right. and they're like, "Okay, it's time for I your close up." And it. I thought, "You know what? After doing 
Dexter for three years, I honestly feel like I could do anything. Wow. I really feel like it's... I mean, I, I just... I don't know what else to compare. I feel like I can... I felt very comfortable holding my own... Well, it's because of what you've done. Because you, 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 you did elevate a... Uh, what, what could have been a... Uh, a, a just a sort of a boring character. And, I mean, you know, I mean, nanny, when you yeah. think about nannies on television, yeah. the history of nannies, yeah. I don't really know if there is much of one. I mean, <laughs> yeah. there was a show called Hazel maybe a long time ago yeah. or something. Yeah. But uh, you, you've ev- elevated to something that is, she's fun to watch, and she oh, is the light, like, just like you said, you know? It's, yeah. It's, you could tell that a lot of thought and a lot of, uh, you know, just walk up to, the, to, the, to your spot and then just say your words and leave. You yeah. Know? Very invested. No. Yeah, yeah it's good. well, thank you. Everyone should know that. Oh, well, I appreciate that. I want you, you to hire Amy it, Garcia. You guys make it, make it easy. My brother's name is Garcia. Really? Yeah, Richard Garcia. You guys probably aren't related. You never know. <laughs> us Latinos, we like to make the babies. <laughs> There's a lot of us. <laughs> He's but, adopted. Yeah. Um, hey, listen, thanks so much for coming in. Anything, you. anything else you want to say about it? About, uh, no, just... Uh, What's next? I'm keep, yeah. no, keep I'm watching. Just, keep watching, and I'm really excited for... How this is going to end. It's terrifying, isn't it? I mean, do you it? think oh. people are just going to love it? Do you feel a lot of yes. pressure? Like, they've grown up with the characters that you've created, and there's a big responsibility the pressure is this unbelievable. fervent fan base. Yeah, as, as has been said, there's Does like Does it a, keep you up at night where you're like, oh, my God, the Dexter fans are going to kill me? Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe not the death part, but... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, but I, I, I wake up and I'll have thoughts, and I, I, I got to write yeah. that down because this might, yeah. this might help. This, you do know, you guys... Here, I'll, last question. On behalf of, you know my Twitter fans, because they're constantly asking, how's it going to end? Do you know how it's going to end? We do. Absolutely. Oh, you're killing me. This is like uh, Trinity. In, uh, I don't know if you were at Comic-Con that year, but uh, when John Lithgow was standing there, and he was, it was just before season four had started, he looked out at the audience, because he knew the, what was going to happen. Oh, Every, he knew about Rita, okay. everything. Oh, wow. And he looked out at the audience and said, if you knew... What I knew, it would blow your mind. <laughs> and everyone was like, wow. <gasps> hopefully, oh, hopefully a... the end of Dexter will blow your mind. Yeah. Cool. It's going to be good. It's going to be exciting. Awesome. It's been, uh, what a ride, huh? I'd say. I, I, I think that other shows would not exist without a show like this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good times. Yay. Amy Garcia. <laughs> Jamie. Uh, you know what? I ca- Jamie, Jamie Batista. Jamie. It's Batista, Batista, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's really Amy Jamie. Right, it is. But yeah, Batista. Do you answer that on the street now? If people go, Amy Jamie. Oh, yeah. They will now. Yeah. The eight people that listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? You're like a huge hit. And what's your, uh, what's your uh, Twitter? Oh, it's Amy, which is, my name is spelled French, even though I'm not French. A-I-M-E-E <laughs> underscore Garcia, G-A-R-C-I-A. And they should check, yeah, follow you. Because you I are very. You already. No, no, I'm saying they should follow you. And oh. they should, because you, you do, you are very. Uh, you're fun. You're fun to, to, to follow. I do you take pictures, stuff. not yeah. on set. I'm very cognizant of, I'm very paranoid, but yeah, yeah. you will get some little tidbits. I, I walked into my trailer yesterday, and I saw the shirt you guys gave us. And they're like, <laughs> oh, my God, I want that shirt. Where can I buy that shirt? <laughs> you can't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then there's, like, Jennifer. I freaking walk out. I took a nap, and I walked out totally discombobulated with my jacket only on one shoulder, an umbrella, and... <laughs> To, uh, half asleep, and Jennifer was like, "Oh, I am tweeting that." <laughs> yeah, and she did that. Jennifer's a like, good tweeter. I'm too, like, yeah. really? <laughs> and so she, you know, then there's that. But um, but turnabout's yes. fair play, you know. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna get her. I'm gonna get her. But uh, but yeah, I love Dexter, and I'm basically I realize that people don't care uh, except if I tweet about Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> it's, good. it's changing. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Well, there it is. Thanks for uh, thanks for. Uh, uh, it's gonna happen. What, what, how's it go again? I haven't said it in such a long time. It's gonna. Uh, it's, it's gonna, gonna happen. To, ag- it's gonna happen yeah. again and again. It has to. It has to. There you, go. <laughs> you wrote it. You I know. <laughs> Dang it! I screwed up that ending. Thanks for listening. <laughs>